Boston special teams were anything but in a loss to Toronto last night. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Wednesday, November 6th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Before we get started breaking down the storylines, stats, and signals from a disappointing loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs last night, quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at Locked NHL Bruins. You can find me, my hockey thoughts, dad jokes, at Ian C. McLaren. I am a lifelong Boston Bruins fan. I've been covering this team for various outlets for nearly 20 years now, since the Joe Thornton trade, in fact. And I was a full-time hockey news editor for The Score and have been hosting this podcast since 2019, our sixth season here of Locked On Boston Bruins. And last night, it was two steps back after some baby steps forward, a very disappointing loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs after back-to-back shutout wins over the weekend against the Philadelphia Flyers and the Seattle Kraken. Boston was facing a Toronto team without Austin Matthews. He was a scratch due to, I believe, an upper body injury. And they were also facing a Maple Leafs team who had succeeded on only 10% of their power play opportunities so far this season. And as I said yesterday, you do not want to be the team against whom the Leafs regress positively and lo and behold that's exactly what happened last night boston's special teams were anything but as they allowed toronto to score three power play goals en route to a four nothing win over our bruins and on the other side of things the bruins went 0 for six on their own power play opportunities. So add it all up, and it was a disastrous game for Boston in terms of special teams. Um, Allowing Toronto to score on three of their power play opportunities while they go 0 for 6 on the power play. Um, And in fact, it could have been much worse for Boston as they gave Toronto even more power play opportunities than they earned Boston penalty issues rearing their heads again with no fewer than seven power play opportunities given to uh, the Maple Leafs on which they made good on three. And then you go out and you go over six on your own power play. It's just, just so frustrating to see, Uh, That happened once again. Here's what happened. Charlie McAvoy tripping against Mitch Marner. Charlie Coyle tripping against Matthew Nyes. Brad Marchand called for roughing against Chris Tanev. We'll give him a pass on that one as he was defending David Pasternak, who was boarded by Tanev. So Marchand coming to his defense. That's a, a penalty you don't mind seeing, especially since... Tanev also went off for Ruthping against Marshawn, and he had the boarding penalty uh, assessed after that hit to Pasternak. But then you had Nikita Zadorov called for interference. David Pasternak called for high sticking. Charlie McAvoy called for hooking. Uh, Brad Marshawn later called for tripping. And Mark Kastelik called for roughing. And then, uh, lo and behold, 
Morgan Riley scores a power play opportunity. William Nylander scores on the power play. Matthew Nye scores on the power play. And it's 3-0. Steven Lorenz adds a empty net goal with over four minutes left in the game as the Bruins were clearly in desperation mode at that point. So that was the story. No question. It was special teams and Boston's failure to kill penalties against a team without Austin Matthews and a team that had been struggling on the power play. Um, Coach Jim Montgomery saying afterwards, our special teams, the numbers are the numbers tonight, right? The players that get the privilege of either being on the penalty kill or the power play, along with the coaches, need to be better with our plan and they need to be better with their execution. You can question the plan, uh, whether or not it's effective. Um, it's clear they miss a player like Jake DeBrusque on the penalty kill. Derek Forbort was a, a stalwart on the penalty kill. Love him or leave him. But those are guys that they're missing and that they did not uh, replace. And they allowed Boston's, or sorry, Toronto's power play to click when it had previously not been. Uh, David Pasternak, who was benched in the game against Seattle, said it was a tough loss, but they feel they're right there for most part of the game. Special teams obviously hurt them. We didn't do the job on the power play, and they did. Um, the Bruins had had Toronto's number for quite some time. The playoffs, regular season contests, uh, first time they beat them, I think, the last what, eight regular season games. Um, Pasternak will look more at the stats here coming up, but he did have four shots and was a minus one in 22 minutes of ice time after being benched for the third period of that game. But no question, the big story in this one was the special teams. Uh, yes, Anthony Stolarz was very good for Toronto, making 29 saves for his first shutout of the season. But when... You are facing a team without Austin Matthews and who is coming into this game with a 31st ranked power play, but also with a, such a loaded offense that you know they're not going to stay that low all season long. You cannot have that revolving door to the penalty box. You cannot take seven minor penalties. The one from the... Uh, Marshawn defending Pasternak, I can kind of excuse, but um, just a revolving door of penalties. And when your penalty kill is not clicking, when your power play is not clicking, it's a recipe for disaster, especially against a team like the Toronto Maple Leafs. So the Bruins now facing a loss after those two straight wins, their record back under 500 they're going to be playing a couple dangerous teams coming up and all of a sudden it's looking kind of bleak again here for our Bruins uh, and we'll take a look at the stats and trends signals that we can take away from this game here as the podcast continues price picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings prize picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all you just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash you can run your game all season long on prize picks cook up hot takes with your friends and win real money this season when you and your crew run your game on Price Picks, it's the best way to win real money this hockey season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn on sports opinions into real money with Price Picks. Download the app and use code Locked On NHL to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Again, download the Price Picks app. Use code locked on NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks now offers Venmo for quick and easy deposits and withdrawals into your account this sports season. They put their members first. All withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. 
When my picks hit, I can get my money in as fast as 15 minutes. Again, promo code locked on NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks run your game. All right, let's take a look at the important stats you need to know from last night's game. And at five on five, this game was actually fairly even. Shot attempts were actually in Boston's favor in five on five play last night. They had 36 of the shot attempts compared to only 33 for the Maple Leafs. Shots were 14 for the Bruins, 17 for the Maple Leafs. Scoring chances at Five on five were an even 15 15. The Leafs did generate five high danger chances, five on five, compared to only two for the Boston Bruins. And that's kind of the key as well. While the special teams certainly let the Bruins down, uh, they were not able to generate much five on five. Now, in all situations, the Bruins actually had the better numbers in this game. 57 to 48 in terms of shot attempts. Shots were 29 27. Scoring chances were 29 25. And high danger chances were 11 10 in favor of the Maple Leafs. Expected goals last night overall, and that's adding up all the different factors shot attempts, shots, scoring chances, high danger chances. Only a slight advantage for Toronto last night. 2.58 compared to 2.54 for the Bruins. The difference was Toronto's ability to score on the power play going 3 for 7 while Boston went 0 for 6. Straight up, that was the biggest and pretty much only difference last night in the game. Uh, Super unfortunate that Boston was not able to take advantage of their power play opportunities. While Toronto, again, who came into this one ranked 31st, they were able to do so. Uh, when it comes to shots on goal last night, Justin Brazo uh, had three, as well as Charlie Coyle and Brad Marchand. David Postonok led the way, tied with Charlie McAvoy at four apiece. Uh, so some guys were stepping up, getting the puck on net. Stolars uh, played very well for the Leafs. Not taking anything away from his performance, uh, but the Bruins, yeah, weren't able to solve him on this night. Uh, Jeremy Swayman making 23 saves on 26 shots. Another sub uh, 900 performance, 885, but again, zero goals at five on five. There was the three power play goals and the one empty netter for uh, for the Leafs. So zero five on five goals where the majority of the game was played, although this one with 13 combined minor penalties taken, there wasn't a ton of five-on-five play. Uh, Tyler Johnson made his Bruins debut, 13 minutes and 51 seconds of ice time, including almost three minutes on the power play. He recorded one shot on goal. Uh, A couple guys without a shot last night, Trent Frederick, 10 minutes of ice time, uh, which was actually the fewest among Bruins forwards. That's a real concern right now for Boston. Uh, There was that report from Kevin Weeks yesterday suggesting that if he were to hit the open market as a free agent, then there would be a lot of interest. He's not really, you know, that typical contract year bump. That's not him right now. He is not that guy at the moment. And that's a real concern for the Bruins to not, you know, he was expected to fill kind of the void when Jake DeBrusque went off to Vancouver. He was expected to kind of up his game in that same mold. A strong two-way player, aggressive on the forecheck, getting pucks on net, building off last season where he scored quite frequently uh with what a 2018 goal performance the expectation this season was that he would build on that try to push for 20 goals right now he's got one in 14 games he's on pace for only 18 points uh which just is not going to cut it and 
Uh, if you want to assert yourself as a core player for this team who is integral to their success and a guy you want to keep around for a long time, uh, he is not playing like that at the moment. Uh, so that's a real source of concern right now for the Bruins. To his credit, Charlie Coyle has been stepping up uh, the new line of uh, Coyle, Zaka, and Brazo been playing pretty well, although uh, zero shots last night for Pavel Zaka. He's another guy who needs to get going. Career season last year, he's on pace for only 18 points as well. And that just cannot last. He is on pace for 187 shots. Um, only six goals that he's on pace for. That is not going to last. His shooting percentage will rise at some point. So hopefully that begins uh, sooner than later. Right now he's shooting at 3.1%. Last year, 14.2. The year before that, 16. So that is going to rise. Uh, and the same with Frederick, uh, to be fair. His shooting percentage uh, currently sits at, um, what is it, 5. Last year was 14.6, 14.2. So even if he was, you know, double what he's at right now, he'd at least have two or three goals. And uh, right now, those both of those guys are pretty snake-bitten. Overall, what it means for the Bruins last night's loss, well, they are once again below 500. That's a key stat you need to know. Um, it was a busy night around the NHL right now. After last night's results, they are sixth in the Atlantic in terms of point percentage, 464 behind uh, Detroit, Ottawa. Ottawa lost last night, but they're still at 500. Uh, the Leafs are at 571. Lightning at 538. Even though the Lightning have lost three in a row, Bruins haven't really made up much ground. And the Bruins have played 14 games so far this season, which is the most among uh, Atlantic Division teams tied with Toronto. And if you look at the points, they sit fourth. But a team like Ottawa is one point back with two games in hand. The Red Wings are two points back with three games in hand. They play tonight against Chicago, so they could easily pass the Bruins tonight. Buffalo is two points back with a game in hand. So all of these teams are within striking distance. and. A more concerning thing for the Bruins is their minus 12 goal differential. Their 34 goals are second fewest in the Atlantic. Only Detroit has a more uh, anemic offense. They've only scored 29 goals, but again, they've played three fewer games. In the Eastern Conference as a whole, Boston's goal differential is... Uh, 13th, minus 12. Pittsburgh is at minus 13. Philly's at minus 15. And Montreal is at minus 18. Boston's 34 goals are 14th in the uh, in the Eastern Conference. New York Islanders at 32 goals and the Red Wings at 29. So again, Boston's offense is really struggling here. Uh, Tyler Johnson came in, played some good minutes last night. He's not the answer per se. It's going to take him some time to get up to game speed. Uh, but it's more the um, likes of Trent Frederick, Matt Potra, Charlie Coyle, Pavel Zaka, uh, Charlie McAvoy. To their credit, Marshawn Pasternak have been playing much better. Uh, Marshawn specifically, maybe not Pasternak as much, but those other guys, those secondary guys really need to step up here for the Boston Bruins. And it's not going to get any easier. They got a couple of tough games against Canadian opponents coming up. We'll take a look at the signals we can take away from this game here as the podcast continues. FanDuel is America's number one sports book, and they're giving you a great opportunity to get in on NFL action right now. 
New customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win on that first $5 bet. The FanDuel Sports Pack gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And of course, it's not just NFL. You can get in on the action with respect to the NHL and the NBA as well. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. So what takeaways are there from last night's game that we can uh, carry over to the next couple games, which will be against the Calgary Flames and the Ottawa Senators? The Bruins will not practice here on Wednesday. They're getting a day off. Uh, And don't forget, it's not just a matter of, oh, they have a bad loss. So coach should take them out there the next day run them ragged with a bag skate to send a message. There are mandated days off uh, with respect to the uh, collective bargaining agreement. So this is probably one of those games. And uh, the Bruins will be back in action tomorrow night against the Calgary Flames, a team that is coming off an overtime win last night over the uh, Montreal Canadiens. And then they will be taking on a Senators team on Saturday that just came off a loss 5-1 to the Buffalo Sabres. What needs to happen here? What needs to change for this team to get it going? Well, you know, practice would help, of course, especially when it comes to the power play, special teams. Uh, But it's just so hard to, um, to imagine them hitting another level at this point. Uh, They couldn't solve Stolarz last night. The power play was not on point, but what really continues to hurt this team is their lack of discipline. The Bruins have struggled with this all season long. They lead the league by far in minor penalty minutes. Yes, uh, the Leafs took six last night. They were in second place coming into this one, but the Bruins, when it comes to penalties, minor penalties, they've taken 74 minor penalties this season in 13 games. Uh, Sorry, in 14 games. 74 divided by 14. Let me see what that math is. 74 divided by 14. That is about five minor or penalties per game that this team is averaging. That's 10 minutes where you're putting your team behind. The next closest team is Toronto, who took six last night, but they're still eight behind the Bruins. The least penalized team this season, Vegas, they've taken only 22 minutes in minor penalties through 12 games. Boston has 54 more minors. That's insane. In terms of total penalty minutes, the Bruins are at 175. Uh, They have five majors on their record as well, which is, you know, not near the top. New Jersey, Nashville, Edmonton, LA have more. But total penalty minutes, 175 for the Bruins. That's 12 and a half minutes per game that the Bruins are putting themselves behind. And that's over a minute more than second place Philadelphia. That's just, you cannot have that happen. And whether or not it is being caught flat-footed or just a lack of discipline, it just cannot happen anymore. Uh, Pasternak had a bit of a quiet night after that benching. Some shots on goal, but he did take a penalty that led to Toronto's second goal. So speaking of Penalties, it's not like he's out there killing penalties per se, but um, he's a guy that they can afford to take off the ice, especially when it comes to that kind of undisciplined play. Uh, So 
not only do they need to get him going, but it's a situation where you are hurting your team by taking yourself off the ice and also by putting the team down a man. Um, you know, when it comes to the penalty killing, um, when you take those penalties, you are taxing your penalty killing unit. Charlie Coyle, John Beecher, the highest uh, ice time among Bruins forwards when it comes to the penalty kill. A guy like Pavel Zaka is exerting energy on the penalty kill when you want him going five on five in order to get out of this funk. Same with Charlie Coyle, John Beecher, um, Elias Lindholm. You are overtaxing these guys and expending energy, killing unnecessary penalties instead of allowing these guys to go out there and try to get the offense going, which should be their primary role. So that really needs to change for the Boston Bruins. And that is a trend that needs to, it's just a recipe for disaster right now. You're taking all these penalties, your penalty killing unit isn't that great, and your power play isn't clicking either. And you're not really succeeding that well at five on five. So right now, it's the Bruins just are not the team that we're used to watching. And while it was encouraging to see them bounce back with those wins over the weekend, again, you're not going to do much with a 29th ranked power play. Uh, their penalty kill currently is 20th. The Bruins have traditionally been a strong special teams unit and that kind of, you know, in the past, if they were struggling five on five, they had the goaltending to keep them afloat and their power play penalty kill, especially were areas of strength. They're not getting any of those right now. They're struggling to score uh, five on five. And it's just a pretty bad mix at the moment for the Boston Bruins. Shooting percentage, five on five. The Bruins rank 27th in the NHL. So you compound that with the special teams. And it's not encouraging at all. Again, their next opportunity will be Thursday against the Calgary Flames. We'll preview that game here on tomorrow's episode. As, look as, as well as take a look at our weekly cup check. Look at the top five teams in the NHL where the Bruins rank among them. Maybe that's a segment we need to retire here on the podcast because um, they're nowhere close to that at the moment. Anyways, that is it for today's episode, my friends. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to today's podcast. Uh, I hope you are all taking care of yourselves and taking care of each other. Uh, crazy times in our world right now. And at least we have. Well, it's still fun to talk about hockey, no matter what. Um, please do check out Locked On NHL Fantasy next. Steel and Flip will give you all the latest to get uh, the edge over your fantasy team this week. And it's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Part, uh, sorry, your team every single day. Take care, friends.